suddenly there was a new dimension in the world, an astounding achievement, and it wasn't American. And we were all so unbelievably American, pro-American. We loved America. We tried to drive American cars. We tried to smoke American cigarettes. America was much loved. And this was the first sort of doubt. Can it be the insuperable, the brilliant America? People would talk about America with a passion and an enthusiasm that, alas, we have never repeated. Between what the Russians were saying and their Sputnik, it was all too much. We wanted reassurance from the president that we were safe, that he had a plan for us to regain our position and our power. President Eisenhower had proved himself as a military leader. He knew how to keep cool under pressure, how to stay focused. Within days of Sputnik, he called a press conference to calm the country down. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? President Smith of the United Press, uh, Russia has launched an Earth satellite. They also claim to have had a successful firing of the intercontinental ballistics missile, uh, none of which this country's done. Uh, I asked you, sir, uh, what are we going to do about it? I believe that uh, they, uh, I believe it'd be dangerous to predict what science is going to do in the next uh, 20 years. But it's going to be a very considerable time uh, in this uh, realm, just as in any other. The president didn't answer the question. He wasn't prepared for our reaction to Sputnik. He'd always been able to use his military background to keep us feeling safe. But the press, speaking for the public, wouldn't let Sputnik go. Hazel Markell of NBC. Uh, Mr. President, in light of the great faith which the American people have in your military knowledge and leadership, are you saying at this time uh, that uh, with the Russian satellite whirling about the world, you are not more concerned uh, about our nation's security? As far as the satellite itself is concerned, that doesn't raise my apprehensions, not one iota. I see nothing at this moment, at this stage of development, that is significant in that development as far as security is concerned. The mere fact that this thing orbits involves no duty to discovery to science. They knew it could be done, at least they say so, and they have for a long time. So that's no new discovery. So it, in itself, it imposes no additional threat to the United States. We wanted more from President Eisenhower. We knew him to be a steadfast commander, but this time, it seemed, he wasn't leveling with us. Speaking for most Americans, leading Democratic opponents and others criticized his apparent lack of concern about the risks we were facing. The people of the United States have been humiliated. They're disturbed and they're unhappy. I see nothing wrong in acknowledging Russia's accomplishment, but I see a great deal wrong with kidding ourselves. Not just our pride, but our security is at stake. Our security was at stake. It seemed that almost daily, Soviet leaders told us that they were going to annihilate us. Premier Nikita Khrushchev spoke aggressively because he feared America and our threats that we would destroy them. He was determined to protect his nation by standing up to us, by letting us know that if we attacked them, they would destroy us with their ICBMs. The communists are red fascists. On our side, government leaders had been telling us for a decade that the Soviets were evil and ungodly. That they were a serious threat to our way of life, not just because they had missiles, but because of what they stood for. This boy will grow up acutely aware that there are forces of evil. Communism is a word he is learning to understand. How we meet the communist challenge depends on you. The communists are embarked on a worldwide campaign to take over the world. 
The communist bloc would like to see the entire world under communist domination. The basic idea of the communism that people must be equal, that the rich people have to share their wealth with the poor, and then we will build a society where everybody will have their share. So it was the same what the Jesus Christ, Christ told 2,000 years ago, and he was crucified for his words. So in reality, the first communist was Jesus Christ. Coexistence to a communist means nothing. Uh, you cannot coexist with one who is dedicated to your complete and utter destruction. Of course, the uh, Soviet Union was evil empire to the United States. United States was the same evil empire to the Soviets because they wanted to destroy our country, our social democracy. It was the same feeling on the both sides. Unless we understand and work effectively for the principles upon which our American way of life is founded, the structure will crumble and our heritage of freedom will perish.